Now, the Assistant Minister for Competition and Treasurer, Dr Andrew Lee, is an economist by trade. I spoke to him earlier and I asked him whether he thinks this week's budget would make the inflation challenge worse. Can you imagine, Kieran, as a Labor government, if we hadn't dealt with some of these cost of living pressures right now? You know, there's people doing it really tough. And I think it was... No, important. I totally understand that, but is, as an economist, you, you know more about this than many, many of us. Is it technically inflation then? No, we've gotten the balance right. We've targeted the spending in order to make sure that, for example, uh, people, sole parents who have a child between 8 and 14 get additional support. Uh, people on uh, our study that are, who are on uh, JobSeeker uh, get an increase in their payments. Uh, but we're not engaging in the kind of unfunded cash splash uh, which for the former government engaged in, which would have been inflationary if we'd made that mistake. Cop copping flack on, on that from on that side, but also the government's copping flag for not doing enough uh, for, for middle Australia. So I, I guess it's that balancing act, but is that one cohort that that just has to suck it up right now, the higher prices and so on? This budget does more to reduce inflation than any budget we've seen over the course of the last decade. Uh, it is a really important budget for looking after the most vulnerable. Uh, we've done that because we're a Labor government with Labor values. Uh, we understand the, the importance of uh, taking care of sole parents. Uh, we've increased Commonwealth rental assistance because that is a targeted payment. We understand that increasing it. We've looked at those who are on the lowest payments. We've looked to increase them uh, by modest amounts, uh, as well as thinking about long-term structural challenges. So the, the additional fee-free TAFE places, the new university places, targeted those who will be the first in their family to attend university, and a new evaluation unit that will be set up in Treasury that will measure what works and do a better job of targeting policies to help the most disadvantaged. We've seen a, a surge in migration, 400,000 uh, this year, 300,000 next, and then 260,000 for the few years after that. Has, and this is the criticism from Peter Dutton, that while this surge has happened, the preparation in terms of infrastructure, housing and so on, hasn't. Does the government need to focus more on that? Peter Dutton will flip and flop on migration, but I think he's uh, making a big mistake if he's playing these sorts of dog-whistling games. Uh, every serious uh, commentator expected that when we opened the borders after being closed for a couple of years, uh, there'd be a surge in migration to catch up. With 3.5% unemployment, uh, pe businesses are crying out for skilled workers in order to get projects off the ground. Uh, they're able to employ more Australians when they get those key skilled workers in to create opportunities. And our Housing Australia Future Fund will add to housing supply. Uh, we just need the Liberals and the Greens to vote for it in the Senate, uh, to vote for getting 30,000 more homes, uh, additional homes for people with disabilities, Indigenous Does it do enough, though, the Greens? The Greens are arguing that it's nowhere near enough and that's why they're, they're taking this stand? The, the old stereotype critique of the Greens is that they'll allow the perfect to become the enemy of the good. And, and in this case, that is exactly what they're doing. They have some idea out there as to how much housing they'd like and they're, going, they're saying instead, uh, right, because we can't get our perfect result, uh, we're going to have zero new housing through the Housing Australia Future Fund. That approach makes no sense. To say nothing of the fact that at a local level, it's often Greens representatives that are holding up new housing developments in communities that need them. Now, the budget reply tonight, the opposition leader uh, will, we're told, will have a new policy. Uh, he'll likely be targeting that sort of cohort that we, we spoke about before, middle Australia and uh, the, the working families, as they were once called. Is there risk for government if Peter Dutton does sort of tailor his message to that group? Look, I, I welcome new ideas. So I think wherever they come from, new ideas in politics are a great thing. Sadly, we saw none of that in Peter Dutton's first budget reply. Uh, it was all attacks and negativity. Now, Kieran, just near uh, uh, Peter Dutton's office, there's a John Brack painting which has uh, a set of pencils and next to that there's a little label, no. Uh, and I worry that Peter Dutton walks out each morning, looks at that painting and, and that's how he writes his speeches for the day. We will see tonight the budget reply. Not uh, long to wait. Andrew Lee, thank you as always. Appreciate it. Real pleasure, Karen. Thank you.